Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Jensu588 in the 10 plus 0 game on chess.com. My opponent opens with e4. Let's play a Sicilian today. My opponent's rating is 1127. I went back and looked at the last few climbing the rating ladder videos that I played, and I think the opponents have been in the 16 to 1700 range. So just choosing a different rating range to play against here. Okay, knight f3. Let's play knight c6. I see that Magnus Carlsen... And as a consequence, many other strong players are looking to play the Sveshnikov these days and having good results with it. So knight c6 on move two, definitely a legitimate choice. And my opponent plays bishop c4. So a lot of people play this, this move and have this approach against the Sicilian. But generally, I don't think you should, you should employ this because contrary to e4, e5, black hasn't committed the e-pawn yet. So you can effectively block the bishop. So... Trying to establish two pawns connected on the same diagonal as your opponent's bishop is a pretty good strategy. So I'm going to do that here. And already I can think about playing d5. And I think I'm going to avail myself of that opportunity. Two points of contact in the center here. So there's going to be some resolution of the tension. And if white captures, I'll be hitting that bishop. I already have a nice pawn established in the middle of the board. And a bit of a trap here. So white, if they play bishop b5, looks like a normal move to pin. I will have queen a5 check, hitting the king and the bishop. So yeah, my opponent, I think correctly, brings the bishop back to b3. Now let's think how I want to proceed from here, because when you play in this fashion and you play e6 followed by d5, we have this e-file that is open, and I don't want to get inconveniently checked too early. So you know, I could play knight f6, but I'm a little bit leery of bishop g5, kind of leaning towards playing bishop e7 here. Bishop e7 and then knight f6. Although the exact move order may not matter a whole lot. This pawn is safe, so I'm not worried about that. Yeah, I think I'm going to play bishop e7. There's not a great way to chase this bishop any further unless I want to play knight a5 or something, but that looks a bit premature. I just want to complete my development. So bishop e7 looks like a nice hedge against bishop g5. And intending to continue knight f6 and castles. Just get on with development. Maybe after that, play bishop g4. Try to pin this knight, possibly knight d4 in the future. Just double-checking the time control. Yes, this is a 10-minute game. No increment. Okay, let's develop here. As you can see, I changed up the board layout slightly. I don't know why I get locked into a certain layout. The one that I was previously using was bases. If you're on chess.com and playing with your settings, it's bases. And I switched it up a little bit this time, kind of the more old school pieces and the green on white color scheme. Okay, C4, so creating some tension in the center. My first instinct is to push here and just grab that space. Also deny white the use of this square. C4 could take away some territory from this bishop. I could also just castle and see what happens after that move. I think that's a pretty good option too because let's say I castle and white captures and I take with the knight. White's going to be left with this kind of weak pawn. So castling and leaving some options on the table looks decent too. I don't know if I castle, take, take maybe d4 from white. Try to liquidate the center of the board. I think I'm just going to grab the space. I'll play pawn d4. The only thing I don't like about this move is that it takes away that square from my knight which, you know, may have been nice to use in the future if I played bishop g4, be able to follow with knight d4 in the future. But I do like the space that I gain here, denying white's knight, this natural square. The bishop looks kind of useless on b3 now. I think here I'm just going to castle. I don't think I should sweat about that decision much. And next, I'll probably be looking to get my bishop in the game. So bishop f5 or bishop g4. For those of you who are in this rating range, or even lower, three goals in the opening. Develop your pieces, control the center, and get your king to safety, which almost always means castling. So I feel I've been doing a pretty good job of hitting those goals. Definitely getting my king to safety and controlling the center. I still need to complete development. This piece stands out. This light square bishop has not been developed yet. So I'm thinking now bishop f5. I like that destination square because it's, it comes with a gain of time. Anytime you can develop and also gain time, 
force your opponent to respond to a threat, it's usually a good thing. I'm not as high on bishop g4 anymore because, again, I don't have that knight d4 move. I have knight e5, I guess, but white looks pretty solid here, especially with the knight backing this up. So I think just bishop f5 hit that pawn. See how white reacts. Maybe I can think about knight b4 as well to increase the pressure. Yeah, and white brings that bishop back. So yeah, now I'll definitely consider this move. It hits the pawn on d3 a couple times, although I gotta say I'm not that thrilled to, to trade my bishop, or my knight for that bishop, rather. That's probably something that would favor white, because white's a little bit cramped there. But the threat on the d3 pawn is kind of annoying for white. So let's see how white responds to that. So I'm just noticing this knight doesn't have a lot of good opportunities. I mean, maybe knight b3, but that misplaces that piece a little bit. Yeah, and white plays that. Okay, so I could just play something helpful here. I should be aware that white may have a threat. Always got to be asking yourself, what is my opponent trying to do with their moves? Here, I think largely they play that to just defend d3, but there might be this auxiliary idea of taking and then playing knight takes c5. So I have to be heads up about that. Rook c8 comes to mind. Uh, also bishop d6. I kind of like bishop d6. Yeah, bishop d6. Maybe repositioning this guy. I'm not as worried about this pin anymore because I don't see a good way for white to increase uh, the pressure on the knight, add another attacker to it. So I think I can afford to put the bishop here. <laughs> Jensu said in the chat, so high. I think referring to my, my rating, presumably. <laughs> I'm just going to tell him, hello and good luck. Or good skill, as some people say. All right, a3. Yeah, again, I don't really feel like I've gained much if I trade the knight for the bishop, so I think I'm just going to drop back to c6. I also should be aware of bishop takes h2 as a possible idea. Don't see it really leaning too much at the moment. So yeah, let's just drop back. White could try knight h4. That's kind of an interesting idea. Okay, white plays rook e1. Now I'm thinking just play h6. It's almost always a helpful move in these positions. Just ask this bishop what it's going to do. I'm very happy to take back with the queen if white wants to trade. So yeah, he correctly goes here. And uh, credit to my opponent. I think he's playing well. So I don't really want to play g5. I'm going to think about it, but... Hmm. Also, a5 comes to mind, maybe trying for a4 in the future. Although white might just pivot back here. I'm not sure that really achieves a whole lot. Maybe g5 is better than I give it credit for, but I want to make sure I'm actually achieving something for my trouble weakening my, my king side. Be nice to dispute the file with rook e8, but white can play takes, and if I take with the queen, white takes on f6. Hmm. Bishop g4. I could resume this pinning situation, but don't really see what that gains me. Yeah, you know, g5, bishop g3, and taking might just be the way to play this. I think I am going to do that. I don't believe that this capture should be good for white. Usually sacrificing the minor piece for the two pawns, even though it is right in front of the king, is not justified. So probably bishop g3. I don't really see anything here that would indicate that this would be justified. Uh, perhaps if knight takes g5, h takes g5, bishop takes g5, white could look to play queen f3 after that. I do have two minor pieces in the line of fire, but I think I can, I can play bishop g6, king g7 if need be. Okay, so he does go back. And now I'm thinking just take and play queen d6. Double up white's pawns. Queen d6 looks like a nice move to try to coordinate. And I would think white would want to take with the h pawn here. There's not a real great reason to take with the f pawn. So yeah, he does take with the h pawn. So I'll play queen d6. In 10 plus 0 which is a popular time control. I know many of you play it. You got to be very cognizant of your time when you get around, I'd say, yeah, below five minutes, like in the five to 
four to five minute range. I think you want to start playing fast right around here. Not overly fast, but faster than normal because you can easily slip into time pressure. No question. Okay, knight here. That is an odd move. I kind of think he's going for queen f3. Hmm. Yeah, there's not too many other reasons to play that. Like, I don't think the knight coming back here matters a whole lot. So I'm already trying to think, how can I sabotage queen f3 or exploit queen f3 when it's played? Rook f8 is a default move. Uh, knight e5 is interesting here. Knight e5 actually may be kind of a cool idea. I kind of like that. I'm going to play knight e5. Add some pressure to these points. Before playing this, I had to make sure my queen wasn't overloaded because I am asking the queen to defend both c5 and e5, but I think it's okay. The John Bartholomew School of Time Management. I was talking about how I'm going to play fast, and then I spent 42 seconds on that last move. <laughs> Typical stuff. Okay, knight here. This looks like a bit of a shot in the dark. I think b6. It's looking pretty good. Yeah. B6, if knight B7, I just play queen C7. No big deal. Yeah, you really want to avoid one-move threats like that. So yeah, he's going to go right back. But um, definitely there were more constructive things White could have done there. Okay, let's play this. Line up the rooks. White's kind of suffering from some misplaced knights. Really minor pieces in general here, because that bishop is also not happy on c2. Okay, so knight there. Starting to look at this tactic, if I can pull that off. It doesn't quite work yet, I don't think. If I take, the idea would be if he takes, I take here and take c2. But if I take, he takes this, uh, sorry, if he takes on e8 first, take back, and then there's this operation. I do have a check at the end, but I don't think it's quite enough. So in such a situation, I don't see a clear way to benefit. So I'm going to play a helpful move. Uh, that is, I didn't see a clear way forward immediately. So king g7, on the other hand, kind of secures some points here. It takes my king off the back rank. So if ever there's a trade that's not coming with check. I'm accepting that this is probably not strictly the best move, but I think it's a useful move I can play without burning a lot of time. Next, I may look to double rooks if I can. Here I'm considering playing a5, just to stop him from playing a5. Yeah, knight takes c4, nothing really has changed with that. So let's just play this myself. Another thing white could try right around here is f4. And he could look to push, but I'm okay with, with white doing that because I think it's probably going to weaken his king side more than he would like. Okay, b3. And now I think this plan of doubling, as I mentioned, looks pretty good. Let's double on e7. Could double on either square, but e7 looks fine. This is the only truly open file in the position. So my rooks belong on this file, I feel. Yeah, knight takes c4 now is probably not going to work ever because of this, so let's just do this. But his rook looks useless on a3. It's not going anywhere. He doesn't need the additional defense of this, so... I think now this is getting to a critical stage for white because I'm ready to move this knight away and start creating some serious problems for him down this file. So now, while I have some downtime on this move, I'm just planning where I can put this knight. Knight f3 check would be nice to unveil the two rooks, but bear in mind, he's going to take with the knight if I do that, or he should take with the knight, and then e1 will be defended twice. So that's not going to cut it. Uh, he goes back. Could play knight g4. That certainly looks pretty decent. Uh, knight takes d3, he can take on e7, there's still some issues with that. Knight takes c4, he's going to take on e7. 
Don't think those tactics are quite landing. Bishop g4 is interesting. Although knight takes, I probably don't gain much. I think I'm just going to play knight g4. Yeah, let's play knight there. And if he takes e7, I'm going to have a pleasant choice which way to take. But I will want to make this decision relatively quickly. Let's take with the queen. I like staying doubled here. Looking for queen e1 ideas. Also stops him from playing knight e2. I think his knight is just an issue here in general. And the bishop, so many pawns on the same color as that bishop. So okay, he plays knight here. Good defense. Ah, can I take now? Take and then come in with check and the knight here. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. So tempting. <laughs> yeah, that said though, I don't know. I don't know if that's winning or not. Because he has queen e2. He's hanging on by a thread. Okay, I'm going to go here. Still looking for that trade. He could play the knight back to h2, or maybe even to d2. Yeah, he does go back. Okay. Let's play with this knight now. So I'm saying if you're going to play knight f3, I'll take. Knight f1, definitely possible, but I think I'm going to find a way in eventually. Not exactly sure, but could move that knight away again at this point, maybe back to g6, try to make way for queen e1. I think I'd really like to land queen e1 at some point. Okay, so now this looks like a tactical issue because takes, and once he takes back, I have knight g4 check, and I'm going to play queen takes e2 after that. Yeah, okay, so I finally succeeded in landing a tactic. Bishop d1, and this is checkmate. Okay, so that ended uh, tactically in my favor, but I gotta say, Jensu588, good game. You played quite well, I think, for especially for your rating. Often at this rating level, if you can play a game without committing a major blunder, like of a piece or something, that's excellent. And given that he's playing an IM, and this is far above the level of competition that this player is probably used to, I give them an A for how they played. Uh, honestly, that was very, very good. And I had to work pretty hard to win this game. So I do feel like White was cramped throughout. And the minor pieces really told the tale. The fact that White's minor pieces just never really found good homes. You know, you could see right around here, I was talking about the knight on b3, the knight on h2, they're just not so effective. The bishop buried behind this wall of pawns, and white later playing b3 and a4, that didn't do white's bishop any favors either. And I think black should probably be close to winning here, even though it did take a while to land a tactic. And you know, even up to the end, it wasn't completely clear that I was going to have a tactic, like if white played knight f1 or something. But... Yeah, as you can see from the, the stats here, zero mistakes, one blunder, zero missed wins. Pretty clean game for the most part. Uh, let, me, let me switch to the analysis board. We'll pull this game up. There we go. So I'll do what I always do when I'm analyzing these games. Try to go through it once on my own, draw some conclusions, some relevant points, things I want to consult the engine on, and only later add that engine, you know, as the final step. Very important to do this. Draw your own conclusions. Think independently. Think actively. So I played the Sicilian and white played knight f3, but did not go for the open Sicilian. The open Sicilian is d4 now for white on move three. And bishop c4. And you see this a lot too, especially if black plays d6. You know, I see bishop c4. Very, very popular opening. But even here, I'm not convinced that this is the best way for white to play because... Uh, black can play e6 and then and block the bishop, and if black wants, play for d5. And I think given that I played knight c6 and I haven't even committed the d-pawn yet anywhere, I think e6 and d5 is just 
that's the plan you should go for if you're black in these situations. So white played d3, and then went d5. And by the way, the line I was intending to play, this Sveshnikov variation, which Magnus and others have been playing, is this line. And this seems to be holding up pretty well theoretically at the moment. Magnus had two pretty easy draws against Fabiano at the World Championship, was actually pressing from the black side. So, But instead, the game went like this. Uh, White could play knight c3 here if they want to try to hinder the d5 idea. But in my experience, d5 almost always is achievable for black if, you, if you're patient enough. So I would probably play knight f6 against that. Not fearing e5, because I think after e5, white does get overextended. Knight g4, two attackers here. Let's say queen e2, queen c7. Add a third attacker, and white should not be able to support that pawn. If knight b5, I think black can step back here, and I think that pawn will soon be lost. Note that knight d6, we can just take, scoop up the d pawn. So d3, I went ahead and played d5. There was a trade. And white wisely backed that bishop off to b3 because this was kind of the first test for white. Bishop b5 pins the knight. Looks like a normal move, but queen a5 check is a problem. Always a motive you want to look at. This queen a5 check against a bishop on b5. and Or possibly a knight on b5. And if knight c3, I saw that I could continue with this move, d4, pinning the knight. And even a trade here, even though there's no bishop on b5, white still has this issue to deal with. Looks like I'm going to win a piece. I don't think something weird like b4 even is going to save white. White could throw on a check on uh, e2, but I always just block. This knight is doomed. So, yeah, Genso correctly played bishop to b3, and I played bishop e7, followed by knight f6. Again, bishop e7, I just played that, so... Uh, I didn't have to worry about this pin immediately. Yeah, and c4, I already feel like c4 is kind of a mistake for white. I don't think white's doing so poorly here. They have a little less space in the center because of my pawns controlling all this territory. But the position looks fine. Uh, I would say rook e1. Maybe rook e1, let's say castles, and then the bishop coming out and just probably try to continue with knight bd2 or knight c3. One of those two places. And I might do what I mentioned, like bishop g4, look to do this. But despite the slight space disadvantage, I think white should be fine here if this were to happen. But c4, I feel, is somehow a little bit wrong. Uh, in general, I'm not a fan of playing c4 or if you're black, c5 when you already have a pawn here. Because it creates a backward pawn. Always creates a backward pawn. It doesn't really solve the issue of this square. That square is even weaker because white can't use a pawn to ever contest it. That's why I had some misgivings about playing d4 myself. It does gain space, but it'd be kind of nice to use that square. But one line I was looking at briefly was this. And I thought maybe white can play d4 and try to liquidate the center and get rid of that bad pawn. I didn't see anything really compelling here for black. You know, if, if I take, it just seems like there's going to be mass trades. Don't think this is leading to an advantage for me or anything. So d4 looks normal. I think these moves all are pretty normal. Knight b4, I'll check that with the engine. I don't know if that was like a net gain for me because my knight was forced back. But I felt like it was awkward for white to defend against especially the d3 threat. And I think white's knight is going to be kind of misplaced on b3. I think the knight would be rather, rather be directed to the e4 square or... Maybe after rook e1 somehow over to the kink side. So I'm going to check that move with the computer. Also, maybe even this move, bishop d6. Because that pin did prove to be a little annoying. This pin on my knight, that is. So, you know, bear in mind, after knight b3, as I said in the game, white does have this threat of taking on f6. So if I were just to play something, let's say rook e8. Take on f6, and if I take with the bishop, white can take here. I was trying to avoid that. You'd hate to have to take with the pawn and double isolate your pawns and expose your king a little bit. But yeah, I do wonder about these two moves, knight b4, bishop d6. I think I did make the right call uh, here by playing g5. I did think for a while on these moves, but g5 felt correct. I think once I've gone this far and played bishop d6, it makes sense to break the pin. And then just follow with the trade, and I, I really like queen d6. That move is a nice follow-up because... It defends this pawn for one thing, 
And it also defends e5 because let's say I were to play b6 instead, I feel like knight e5 is going to be a decent counter for white. And if there's a trade of knights, it looks like white's pieces are trickling into play. There's a threat here. White can double, maybe even triple, or even pop the queen out to f3. Somehow my position looks a little looser than I would like, and white looks pretty active now. So queen d6, just trying to cover these two points. And the overarching theme here in, in my subsequent play, and this is getting kind of advanced, honestly, for this rating level. Um, you know, When I'm playing players around this rating, I'll emphasize again, I'm mostly talking about very big picture things, avoiding tactical mistakes, trying to uh, capitalize on undefended pieces, kind of the stuff I talk about in the chess fundamentals, like real basic pawn structure decisions. But this game kind of came down to squeezing my opponent, really having to utilize all the resources in the position, like doubling the rooks, playing a temporizing move like king g7. So the fact that, you know, a move like this is kind of relevant to me even keeping an advantage here, I think is a testament to my opponent's play. I'm not trying to inflate Jensu's ego too much, but that's really good. I think this is promising for this player. That said, though, I think knight h2, probably another step in the wrong direction. Um, feels like white has to get better coordinated here. And knight h2 feels passive and maybe one-dimensional, too. I felt like maybe white was trying to play queen f3 with that move, but otherwise it didn't have a lot of redeeming value. So what can I suggest here to white? Well, maybe queen e2 or queen d2, one of these two moves, just to connect the rooks. Queen e2 does invite this, but perhaps white can play queen f1. I think if I were white, I'd be looking to swap the rooks and maybe even swap all the major pieces if I can. So, you know, let's just say hypothetically something like this happens. The main way you get rid of a space disadvantage is not through uh, pawn breaks necessarily. It's through trading pieces. So if you can trade pieces and keep that material status quo, that's usually the best way to get rid of a space disadvantage. Pawn breaks do have their place, like don't get me wrong, but I think people overuse pawn breaks when they're trying to break out of a space disadvantage. Here there's not really any pawn breaks to speak of, so it's not too relevant. But if you're in a cramped position, think about that, trading pieces, especially major pieces, rather than pushing pawns. So that's what I would consider if I were white, you know, something like this, kind of anticipating that I'm going to put a rook here eventually and just immediately trying to swap everything off down the file. Because I, I don't see a real good way to improve these pieces. It's not so easy for white to do that. I mean, white can pivot the knight back here, but say I play rook e8. I don't know that white really wants to play knight e4 because let's say that happens and we trade. Well, now I have a pretty nice protected pass pawn in the center and a, a target on e4. Maybe my doubling will be even better going forward. So it's kind of hard for white to operate with the minor pieces in the existing structure and maneuver them to good squares. I almost feel like some trades and a gradual repositioning in a almost like semi end game is what white needs to do here. The b4 break, not really realistic. I've got too many defenders there. And you kind of saw what happened when white pushed on the, on the queen side. I just closed it up and wasn't much white can do. So yeah, knight h2 feels like a step in the wrong direction. Now also knight a5, try to avoid those one move attacks. Try to make your moves multi-purpose whenever possible. Even if it's basic, like I was mentioning in the opening, my bishop f5 move here on move 10, this is a multi-purpose move. It's a developing move and I'm attacking something. You know, it doesn't have to be more complicated than that. But moves like knight a5, kind of one-off attacks, they will occasionally work. People will just miss your threat, but that's not gonna, that's not gonna lead to you beating good players. So I just played b6, and that knight had to go right back. I was also briefly thinking if there was anything better I could do, but I didn't see anything. Because that is a threat. So here, knight went back, and I just brought a rook over. <clears throat> yeah, now when white played knight c1, I was starting to look at this idea, uh, knight takes c4. Because if white takes back, it works nicely. I can, I can play this, deflect the queen, and then pick up the bishop on c2, and I've won a pawn, and again, I have this really nice protected pass pawn. But we got to pay attention to the other move order. White can throw in rook takes e8 as well. Rook takes e8, rook takes e8, take here. And I briefly looked at this, and then the check, 
which would win if not for knight f1. <laughs> so, you know, if this were a bishop or something, this would be a great combination, but unfortunately here it doesn't work. I mean, my position feels pretty dominant even here, but I didn't see a follow-up, and yeah, it's possible white's just defending. I mean, d3, queen d2, let's say. Note that white doesn't want to take this because there's a pin on the rook on a1, so something like that. Probably not good to go for this as black. So that's why I played king g7. Like, again, I feel like king g7 is a bit of an advanced move, but it underscores this point that if you don't see anything direct in a position and you know you're sitting on a pretty good position, it's totally acceptable to play a constructive move that's going to help you in, in many cases, uh, even sort of abstract ones like the back rank idea. A lot of like good waiting moves are moves around your king. So trying to improve the king position slightly in a safe way, uh, maybe making a pawn move, a luft move, maybe bringing a rook to the center is another good example of a move. Possibly a pawn grab, a space grab with a pawn. Didn't really see that though. I mean, I guess in hindsight, maybe I could play a6 and go for b5 if I want to open up another front here. Uh, g4, also an interesting move. I was not so keen to play that because I do deny all three of these pieces, the g4 square, but I would stop knight f3. Maybe this in the future could be better. But I think I'm relatively happy with king g7. Looks fine. I mean, probably also rook e7 and just directly doubling is fine too. Point is, my advantage is not running away anywhere. So I can afford to do that. So a4. Yeah, and I just played a5. Looked to me like white was trying to break with a5 himself. So let's just shut that down. <clears throat> yeah, and b3. And again, I don't think this structure was doing white's bishops any bishop any favors. And here I started doubling. Yeah, rook a3, again, just not a constructive move. The rook has nowhere to go here. Feels like it's getting into almost lost territory for white at this point, but, I mean, I, I guess if I were to offer white advice, I would still try to connect the rook somehow. Like maybe, let's say, queen d2. And rook here, knight e2. I would think of something like that. Uh, it doesn't look great, but at least the rooks are now speaking with each other. They're on speaking terms. Queen's helping to defend. Not sure where this knight is going to go. It's kind of the problem of having a cramped position. Your, your pieces are competing for very limited squares. But again, this is going to take some work for me. I don't see exactly how I play this. Uh, again, maybe this knight coming into g4. I keep looking at this move, but let's say take. Bishop takes. Maybe f3, although that weakens this square. Yeah, it's certainly tough for white. Like You can see this knight now can't move because the rook is going to be lost. But I think white has to start looking at something like that, because I feel like without this rook on a1 participating, once this file becomes relevant, it's going to be a massacre. So rook a3, I doubled. The rook went back, so yeah, white wasted two moves there. But even still, it was not simple to find a, a knockout here. Knight f3 would be the, the nice way to continue, but again... Knight takes, take, take, and white has sufficient defenders here. So I'm going to check this position with the computer too because we did actually repeat once at this point, right? Or close to it. I played knight here. There's a trade. White went there. I went back and then eventually popped the other knight in. So that kind of leads me to think maybe I should have popped this knight into g4 and left this one here in the first place. That's sort of backward thinking reciprocal thinking where you know i had this idea in the game but i later had to default to this other idea so logically in my analysis i should look at this now because it may be just the better move outright because now if knight f3 because i've kept this knight takes and then white really will lose that rook on e1 so that's that's the sort of thinking you want to start engaging yourself in if you aren't already you can take existing ideas that you played in a game, try to modify them in your your analysis, or maybe even during the game, as if a, a chance comes up to correct yourself, kind of like I did with this. Right here, so after this happened, and I took with the queen again to keep the pressure here, I really wanted to play knight takes f2. King takes f2, and then check here. Forces king f1, only move. And now, it just looks so good to play this and threaten mate, but... I, I couldn't figure out what to do if white plays queen e2 here. 
This looks almost like a tactics trainer position, but I didn't see anything. Knight h2, white can just take it. Note that white does not want to play queen d2, because queen d2 does allow knight h2, which is going to deflect white's knight from guarding their queen. And then I really would win. But queen e2, couldn't find a reply to that. Let me just think if there is one. It's kind of a weird position because white's not actually threatening to trade queens with me because I would take and then go take that bishop, but it's like, what do I do with this move I currently have? I don't see anything uh, compelling here. Yeah, I don't think this is sound, but I'm going to be curious what the computer says because I really wanted to play knight takes f2. That looks like a thematic tactic in this position, but if you don't see the follow-up, you can't go for it. And I don't think changing up the move order really matters. Like if takes, then check... Uh, white doesn't want to step to g1 even though they have that option because this would happen and then we get everyone's favorite, the royal fork. So that's not good, but it looks to be just the same position. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I do have knight g4 check here. Ooh, I did not appreciate that. I don't have to use e3 for the queen. I can use it for the knight. Light bulb moment right there, guys. That'll happen a lot. Those of you who spotted that during the game, nice job. I'm sure there's already people at this stage in the video who previously in this video have told me, hey, John, you should have played knight takes f2 because knight g4 check was crushing after that. <laughs> so, yeah, I missed that. I missed that the knight can go to e3 and that I don't have to play the very natural and tempting queen e3. Yeah, that's crushing. Just takes a couple seconds to verify mentally that that's crushing. As I said, king g1, then I will play this check and... You know, if king f1, there's queen f2 mate. And I already showed what happens if king h1, we get the fork. Mm-hmm, yep. So that was the key thing I missed. All right, well, I learned, see, I learned something without having to turn on the engine. And I made a mistake, didn't play the best move here. But if you can engage in that sort of analysis, your chess is going to be so much better. Don't click on that engine right away as soon as you finish a game. Bad, bad, bad to do so. Okay, so I played 95. Yeah, it still keeps the edge. Then I went for this. But it would have been nice to land that. You know, here after 95, I think White's correct not to trade, but maybe maybe knight d2 is a better way to keep this knight engaged. Yeah, knight d2. And it's not simple. I mean, maybe... Maybe knight here. Although that could allow this. I do have a check down here. Kind of just looking at some way to infiltrate, like bring my queen into e1. I wouldn't mind trading queens, even though I was talking uh, about the value and keeping pieces on board. I wouldn't mind trading queens if I could get my rook to e1 without having to trade rooks in the process, because that would probably win material or seriously tie white down. You know, let's say hypothetically something like this. I know this isn't best play. But that would be a trade I'd be willing to make because White's knight can't move. I'm probably going to play knight b4. Uh, d3 looks very weak. This knight is pinned. Feels like black is very much in the driver's seat here. So may maybe knight d2, though, would have kept more options on the table. I don't think White, White wants to trade because that just emphasizes the fact that I own this file and White still can't play this. I mean, maybe White can do something like this and try to survive. Looks real thin, though. I'm attacking the bishop. I have ideas of knight here. Uh, bishop d1, I can swing over here. It's just a huge difference in piece activity. Well, it's just so tied down. So I played knight g4. Yeah, and I specifically did that, so if knight f3, I can take. And I'll be able to bring the queen in after that. Uh, yeah, and now white blundered at long last. I was wondering about knight f1, though. This is... Maybe one last thing to check with the engine. Knight f1. Because contrary to that other line, if I play knight takes f2 here, knight takes f2, king takes f2, check. King here. The knight is doing a good job of controlling the e3 square. Knight on f1, there is no fun. Knight on f8, there is no mate. Knight on f1, there is no fun. Um, black's not having any fun here. It doesn't look, look like it. At least not as much fun as I would prefer. 
So yeah, knight f1 should probably be white's choice here. And hey, I was I was under a minute at this point. I really would have had to shut up at this point and start playing good rapid fire moves to win the game. <laughs> Never a guarantee. Um, what would I have done if this had happened? Again, I look at moving this knight away. I still want to bring my queen into e1 if possible. Let's say knight g6. <clears throat> yeah, looking for queen e1. There's this move, though, they keep looking at in various forms. Be nice to do this, and then after takes, like, somehow mate him spectacularly, like... <laughs> like something like this, and then a rook check, but it seems to be smoke and mirrors. So, yeah, it would have been interesting. I mean, I can always back the bishop off. I still feel like I'm in control here, but this is not what I wanted... Uh, with a minute left on the clock. So I actually think I kind of misplayed that somewhere. I mean, definitely I misplayed it and not playing knight takes f2. I just didn't notice knight g4. I was only looking at queen e3 in the moment. So I'll take a look at the engine there. Okay, so at this point, I feel like I've conducted a pretty good analysis. So let's just check a few things with the engine. Don't have too many questions on the opening. I think the opening was pretty standard. Yeah, you can see the computer already really likes black. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a little bit small, but yeah, the computer's giving black a solid edge at this point. <clears throat> yeah, d4. Computer backs that decision up. It actually says for white, c4 is not that bad. It's in the top three. I was saying white should probably play something like rook e1. So, all right, c4, not too bad, though. And by the way, I'm not saying you should ignore the computer analysis. Uh, someone pointed out in a recent video that, hey, John, you went past, like, something that, you went right past something the computer said was interesting. You can totally feel free, and, you know, if you're looking for max improvement, maybe you should explore the computer lines on every move. As, as deeply as you want but you know for the purposes of a video that just gets kind of too long to do that so please know that i'm not just glossing over stuff that could be relevant but i've already formulated the key questions in my mind and i'm going to explore those i know where the turning points in the game were you can also use the auto analysis feature to identify those turning points if you're lower rated and you have trouble doing that you know definitely feel free to do that so I was wondering about knight b4. Yeah, computer doesn't look like it's that thrilled about it. Yeah, interestingly here it says that white can play a3. So I actually encourage black to play this knight takes d3 move. So is that because the knight gets trapped somehow? It must be. Oh wow, take queen b1. That is a nice move. Yeah, I definitely didn't see that line. Queen b1. Pretty artistic. Create a queen bishop battery against this knight, and also if the knight moves, can't really even move to safety, but if it could, the bishop on f5 would hang. And also guard the b2 square. That's brilliant. Okay, so yeah, knight b4 might be just kind of a waste of time because if a3 was played, that would have been interesting. I There's a chance I might have just bit the pawn on d3 and not have seen queen b1. So I, could, I guess I could still do this and according to the computer, keep some small advantage, but that would have been sort of antithetical to what I wanted to do with knight b4. I was trying to do that to really attack d3 and make white play an awkward move to defend it. So instead, knight b3 was played. Uh, bishop d6 is up there as I played now, but... Yeah, knight h5 is also interesting. I didn't really consider knight h5 too seriously. Looks a little dubious at first sight to me because you know knight on the rim is dim and also this knight's undefended so the first thing that crossed my mind there is what happens if white does this but i guess because c2 is loose that's a problem for white take take knight take c2 and i'm hitting the rook here so okay knight h5 not the most natural looking move but i see why that that's possible okay so this happened I went for h6. So what about g5? Does the computer approve of g5? Yep, looks like it says it's fine. 
g5, and I was really happy about this trade, and then queen d6. Okay, and again, that's also engine approved. Yep, and you can see the engine is giving black about a plus one advantage here. So it, it really likes my position, the space advantage. I think the minor piece situation is starting to tell for white. Yeah, knight h2, play knight e5. And here it says the best thing for white to do is go right back to f3. Okay. Yeah, I just noticed here, interestingly, uh, one of the top moves is actually what I played coming up, which is this king g7 move. Another top move here is b6, like a prophylactic move. Just better defend c5 before doing anything else. So that kind of points to this, this theme I was saying that black... Their, Black's advantage here is not going to go away, so I can afford to play kind of slower supporting moves if necessary. But I like knight e5. It seemed like a good centralizing move. Uh, I was also looking to stop queen f3. Yeah, and I was kind of criticizing white for this, which I think is justified because b6. Yeah, it does look like the knight just has to go right back. Rook f8 looks fine. <clears throat> here the computer wants to play oh there you go king g7 is up there all right i like to see that also a6 and a5 just kind of pawn moves a6 maybe hinting at b5 later if i want to try to open the position up but king g7 looks like a good human move to me especially in time pressure yeah and the advantage just continues to grow for black because like i said these moves didn't really help white Yeah, and it's kind of amazing. Like, this position here is already plus 5 or 6 for black, according to the computer, and it's still equal material. There hasn't been a tactic in the last however many moves. It's equal material. But that kind of shows you how misplaced white's pieces are and how really devoid of a plan white is here. So I went knight here. Yeah, computer doesn't think it's a bad move, but it's giving knight fg4, so it's kind of saying, yeah... Probably should have gone for this a little earlier. And what if white plays knight f1? Are there going to be tactics? Knight takes f2 is landing. Ah, uh, yeah. Knight takes f2 would win in this case because check and I'm going to get at e1. Yeah, in hindsight, as I was saying when I conducted my self-analysis before adding the engine, yeah, knight fg4 I think is good. There's a trade. Looks like taking with the queen is good. Yeah, keeping that control over the file. Yep, and here we have it, and I'm just really glad that probably many of you and also I and my analysis figured out that knight takes f2 is winning, because it is the, the first instinct move I wanted to play. Yep, and it's because of this knight g4 check. What about queen e3? I see queen e3 is also winning, according to the computer. Yeah, even the position I was looking at is winning. Yeah, another thing I missed. Here, I can just take and play check and go win the bishop, so... Yeah, even that is is pretty crushing. Yep, hit the rook, hit the pawn on d3. Yeah, that's over as well. I'm already up a pawn. More stuff is going to drop off. So that's another thing I missed in analysis. So that would have been a nice way to cap this, but... Okay, I played the knight back. Then h2, and then finally brought this knight in. Yeah, and white was losing a piece after this and the rest was uh, pretty short lived so the only thing, final thing I'm going to check is what happens if white plays knight f1 right here knight f1 hmm I think I was considering knight g6 in my analysis wasn't I Engine says knight c6, knight e7, or knight g6. Yeah, knight c6 would be nice. I'm always just worried about this, though, hitting both pieces. But the computer says no big deal. Just play queen e6 or f6 here, and you're sitting pretty. Yeah, defending both of these, looking for knight b4. The rook still has access to e1. That does look quite good. Mm, yeah. Okay, interesting. So after looking at this with the computer, conducting a little analysis... I'm pretty happy overall with how I played this from a 30,000 foot level. 
But I just, I missed some of the tactics down the road. I was getting a little low on time. You know, if I had more time, I, I definitely would have explored uh, the knight takes f2 move in greater depth. So where was that? Yeah, right here. Because th this was just screaming tactic, but I wasn't able to make it work. But yeah, a couple tactical things to improve on. Um, but overall, I like the way that I handled this and, and increased my advantage, you know, especially moves like bishop d6 seem to have been good. Um, the g5 decision and queen d6, like I think this is where really where I start to get a grip on the position. And white was not able to come up with a good plan. Okay, so let me know what you think about this game. Thanks to Gensu588 for the very tough game. I'll send them the analysis of this. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll be back again with a new one very soon. Bye, guys.